Hi friends, this is more of an architectural talk and in this short video we will look at what identity brokers are and why we may need SAML and OpenID Connect identity brokers during authentication. This functionality is usually required when we have to write applications that can be accessed by users in multiple identity providers, maybe different organizations. As developers, we mostly deal with a single identity provider. When we write our enterprise applications, we integrate with the Enterprise Identity and Access Management System. I will call this IAM from here on. Examples of these IAM software are Microsoft ADFS, Okta, Keycloak, etc. We may write our single sign-on authentication logic using SAML or OpenID Connect, does not matter. Now, all of these diagrams that I'm going to show you shows Keycloak as the IAM and Spring Boot as the application framework. But the architectures are valid for other frameworks too. Also, much of the actual HTTP message flow involves the browser, but these message flows are not shown in the diagrams. It's just abstracted with a single arrow between the web application and Keycloak server. In the diagram, we see a web application that integrates with a Keycloak identity provider, which acts like the enterprise IAM for single sign-on. This integration with the Keycloak server may be using SAML or OpenID Connect. In most cases though, developers would prefer to write their applications using OpenID Connect so that they can easily write single page applications or create microservices. SAML is not really built for writing single page applications or microservices because it's an older technology. Now this architecture on the screen works well if the users of the application are all within the enterprise itself. In other words, the users are all defined within Keycloak. However, there are many cases where this application might have to allow users from a different organization to log in. Think about a scenario where a big multinational corporation like Walmart might have many suppliers and the corporation wants the employees of these supplier organizations to log into their system. There might also be cases where we would like users from social identity providers like Google, Apple, or LinkedIn, or Facebook to log into our application. This could happen when the application itself is open to the general public. Now, one way to achieve this is for the application to insist that all of the users be again registered in Keycloak. But this is a very poor approach for many reasons. The main reason being that there will be duplication of identities. Users would have to remember yet another user ID and password. So let's reject this approach. A much better approach is to leverage the user identities which are stored in the identity providers themselves directly and not create duplication. Now, if we take that approach, then the web application would need to deal with multiple identity providers and not one. The diagram would look something like this, which is shown on the screen. Here, the web application deals with multiple identity providers directly, IDP1, IDP2, and so on. Now, these IDPs may represent social IDPs like Google, Apple, Facebook, or it may represent enterprise IDPs like Okta, Azure, Keycloak, and so on. But from user's perspective, how would this work? In such cases, the user would be shown a single consolidated login page containing options to log in using all of these different IDPs, usually in the form of HTTP links. There will be one link per IDP which is shown on the page. In the application itself, there will probably be a configuration file which will contain all the details of these identity providers and the application would render this consolidated login page from these details. When the user clicks on the login link for an IDP, the application will start the single sign-on process either using SAML or OpenID Connect with the corresponding IDP. That's how things will work. However, there are several problems with this architectural solution. 
The first problem is that the web application has to know about all of the different identity providers and have to deal with them in the code or configuration file. The application would have to support both SAML and OpenID Connect if the IDPs support different protocols, and this can quickly become a nightmare. Secondly, the user attributes or claims coming from these identity providers may have to be transformed to fit the needs of the application. One such example is the claim which represents the user privileges, maybe groups or roles or scopes. They would usually need to be transformed to application-specific roles. And thirdly, more importantly, the architecture does not work very well with single-page applications in the front-end or microservices in the back-end. For single-page applications, the JavaScript code would have to deal with multiple identity providers, which is less than ideal. And for microservices, the verification of the OAuth tokens would have to go to multiple IDPs, which is too much of a burden on them. So at best, this architecture works for monolith applications because it does not support microservices or single page applications. Now here's where identity providers can be used effectively and is helpful in filling the gap. It turns out that most enterprise IAM systems support the idea of identity broker. What's an identity broker? Identity Broker is a piece of software which sits in between the web application and all of these IDPs and helps in protocol conversion and the claim conversion. Enterprise IAM can act like an identity provider as well as a broker. Using the Identity Broker's feature, much of the integration with external identity providers, those IDPs, can be delegated to the IAM. In the example that you see on the screen, the application integrates only with the Keycloak server using OpenID Connect. It could be SAML, but I'm using OpenID as an example. This would be just like integrating with any other IDP. The Keycloak server on its part will deal with the rest of the IDPs using the identity brokering feature. You can also see that the Keycloak will integrate with the IDPs with the protocols that the IDPs support. If they support SAML, Keycloak will integrate with SAML. So Keycloak has an extra responsibility of supporting all of the authentication single sign-on protocols. Using this approach, the web application written with OpenID Connect in mind is able to integrate with IDP2, for example, which only supports SAML. Now extending this idea, the application would be able to integrate with any new authentication protocol in the future. Here in the diagram, it is represented as XYZ, provided XYZ is supported by the identity broker. Now, there are several obvious advantages to this architecture. Firstly, the application does not have to deal with IDPs which support different protocols. And this is true of single page applications as well. And secondly, the developers can easily design their applications using microservices because the OAuth token verification performed by the microservices need to handle only a single identity provider and not multiple. In our example, it's Keycloak IDP. Thirdly, any conversion rules related to claims like groups or roles can be done in the identity broker using setup rules and not hard-coded in the code or in the application. And fourthly, even though the original source of the user information is the IDP, a copy of the claims, except the credentials, is stored in the identity broker, and this provides a central place for consolidated users of the application. In other words, the application does not have much knowledge of these external IDPs, and as far as the application is concerned, these IDPs can simply be registered from the IAM administration console without change in code. In summary, identity brokers can be extremely useful when the application has to deal with multiple identity providers. Software developers can offload much of the burden of protocol conversion and claims conversion to the identity broker 
and focus their energy on writing applications using microservices and single page applications. 